Imagine a world filled with darkness and decay, where humanity craves connections with celestial beings. In this unsettling scenario, daughters unknowingly conceive children with their fathers. How does such a disturbing situation happen and be accepted? And what consequences does it bring to a society on the edge of moral collapse? Join us on this, unveil the alarming tale of Lot's daughters sleeping with their own father. The troubling divine encounter. The interesting journey of Lot, as reviewed in the Bible's book of Genesis, begins to be covered in mystery, particularly regarding his name. Some scholars believe that his name might symbolize the importance of maintaining a respectable act before others, similar to a veil. This interpretation hints at the significance of appearances and social politeness in ancient societies. Lot's travels commence after the passing of his father, leading him from the busty city of Ur, known for its advanced civilization, to the ancient city of Haran. Accompanied by his grandfather Terah, his renowned uncle Abraham, and Sarai, his uncle's wife, Lot embarks on a journey filled with adventure and challenges. As Abraham sets out on his divine mission, Lot faithfully follows, witnessing miracles and hardships alike. Together, they navigate through periods of famine and scarcity, seeking refuge in the bountiful lands of Egypt. However, their sojourn in Egypt takes a wild turn when a deception causes them to face the wrath of the Pharaoh, forcing their expulsion from the land of the Nile. Returning to Canaan, Lot finds himself in a burgeoning conflict, not just between nations, but within his own family. The prosperity given to both Abraham and Lot leads to a clash over resources, as their livestock thrive and multiply beyond the capacity of the land to sustain them. This tension escalates into disputes between their shepherds, highlighting the complexities of human relationships and the challenges of coexistence in a world of abundance and scarcity. In the Bible story, we see a striking difference between Abraham and Lot. It's not just about who they are, but also about the choices they make when faced with life's challenges and opportunities. Abraham stands out for his unwavering trust in God and his willingness to follow divine guidance. His faith is like a compass that directs his decisions, showing us how he prioritizes God's will over worldly desires. One memorable instance is when three mysterious visitors appear to him near the oak trees of Mamre. Imagine Abraham is relaxing by the entrance of his tent when he notices these strangers approaching. The way the story describes their presence hints at something extraordinary about them. Without hesitation, Abraham bows down in respect before them, recognizing their importance. What happens next is proof of Abraham's exceptional hospitality. He invites these strangers into his home, offering them a place to rest and refresh themselves. He even goes the extra mile by providing water to wash their feet and food to nourish them. This moment not only showcases Abraham's hospitality, but also his deep reverence for the divine. In a serene moment under the ancient oaks of Mamre, Abraham and Sarah found themselves at the heart of an extraordinary encounter. As the warm breeze whispered through the leaves, three visitors appeared before them, their presence radiating an otherworldly aura. Amidst the exchange of pleasantries and offerings of refreshment, a revelation unfolded that would forever alter the course of Abraham and Sarah's lives. One of the visitors with eyes that seemed to hold the wisdom of ages, spoke with a gentle certainty. He declared that Sarah, though long past the years of childbearing, would cradle a newborn in her arms by the same time next year. The air hummed with the weight of this divine promise, resonating with the earlier assurance bestowed upon Abraham of a lineage as vast as the countless stars. But this moment wasn't merely about prophecy, it was proof of the bond between mortal and divine. As Abraham's hospitality enveloped the guests, it became apparent that their visit was not merely chance, but orchestrated by a higher power. The intimacy of their exchange revealed the depth of the relationship between God and his faithful servant. Under the canopy of Mamre's ancient trees, amidst the flickering shadows and golden light, Abraham and Sarah witnessed the convergence of heaven and earth in a moment that would echo through the annals of time.
But it's not just the angel's visitation that captures attention. It's the reaction of the city's inhabitants that truly highlights the depths of their depravity. Men driven by lust and greed, descending upon the strangers in their midst, their intentions dark and threatening. And during this turmoil stands Lot, a man torn between his loyalty to God and the corrupting influence of his surroundings. His offer of his daughters as a desperate attempt to quell the chaos speaks volumes about the moral decay that has seeped into every corner of Sodom. As the narrative reaches its climax, the fate of Sodom hangs in the balance. Will God's justice prevail, or will the city's sins be allowed to continue unchecked? It's a tale of moral ambiguity, of right and wrong blurred by the shadows of human frailty and divine judgment, the distressed negotiation of faith. In the ancient text of the Bible, there's a gripping tale that showcases Abraham's incredible bravery and his unwavering determination to understand the nature of divine justice. The story centers around the doomed city of Sodom, teetering on the brink of destruction due to its rampant wickedness. Abraham, portrayed as a righteous and courageous figure, boldly steps forward to intercede on behalf of the city's inhabitants. He engages in a daring dialogue with the Almighty, questioning whether God can spare the righteous alongside the wicked. This audacious exchange not only reveals Abraham's deep concern for the fate of the innocent, but also underscores his profound faith in God's fairness. As the narrative unfolds, Abraham embarks on a bold negotiation with the Creator himself. His inquiries probe the very essence of divine mercy and justice, demonstrating a remarkable blend of audacity and reverence. It's as if Abraham is engaged in a high-stakes negotiation, navigating the complexities of morality and compassion with divine providence. This gripping account resonates with the powerful message found in James 5.16, emphasizing the potency of prayers uttered by righteous individuals. It underscores the belief that earnest supplication can wield tremendous influence, even in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds. Throughout this gripping saga, Psalm 8615 echoes in the background, depicting God as a compassionate and merciful deity, slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness. It serves as a poignant reminder of God's willingness to heed the heartfelt pleas of his servants and his readiness to extend compassion in response to fervent intercessions. In essence, Abraham's courageous intercession before the Lord serves as a timeless testament to the power of faith, the complexity of divine justice, and the boundless depths of God's compassion. The tale not only reveals the immense compassion of the divine, but also underscores the enduring value of persistence in the face of adversity and the pursuit of justice and kindness. During the whispers of impending doom, as God decides to bring retribution upon the corrupt cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, a remarkable event unfolds. In the ancient texts of the Bible, a pivotal moment emerges before the annihilation of Sodom. It's a moment where a man named Lot, along with his kin, finds themselves amid divine intervention. Two angels, emissaries sent by the Almighty, arrive to rescue Lot and his family from the impending catastrophe. It's a stunning display of divine mercy, an unwavering commitment to the covenant established with Abraham a covenant rooted in promises of protection and blessing. As the drama unfolds, the inhabitants of Sodom reveal their true colors, showing their wickedness by attempting to seize the angels. In a swift act of divine intervention, the angels strike the assailants blind, rendering them helpless. Yet even in the face of this miraculous deliverance, Lot hesitates to leave his home behind, demonstrating the human struggle between attachment and survival. As the urgency of the situation becomes undeniable, the angels urge Lot and his family to flee the doomed city. However, their escape is fraught with tension and danger. Lot's reluctance to leave is palpable requiring the angels to almost forcibly drag him away from the impending destruction. It's a poignant reminder of the human inclination to cling to the familiar, even when faced with imminent peril. During the chaos of their escape, the angels issue a stern warning, do not look back. Yet, tragically, Lot's wife succumbs to temptation, her curiosity overwhelming her obedience. In a moment of defiance, she gazes back at the city she once called home and is instantly transformed into a pillar of salt, a haunting testament to the consequences of disobedience. This ancient narrative is not merely a cautionary tale, but a timeless allegory, resonating with themes of faith, resilience, and the consequences of succumbing to temptation. In this dramatic tale, Lot's wife's transformation into a pillar of
of salt stands as a vivid symbol of the consequences that arise when we turn away from divine guidance. Imagine the scene, a once vibrant woman suddenly frozen in time, forever memorialized as a lifeless monument to disobedience. Lot, spared from the impending destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, found himself grappling not only with physical survival, but also with the moral repercussions of his choices. His decision to settle near Sodom, a city steeped in corruption and vice, exposed his family to a toxic environment where maintaining moral integrity was a constant struggle. Lot wrestles with his conscience as he navigates the treacherous moral landscape of his surroundings. Despite his best efforts to uphold righteousness, the pervasive influence of Sodom's depravity threatens to corrode his resolve at every turn. The timeless struggle of Lot resonates deeply with the challenges faced by Christians in today's world, where societal values often run counter to biblical teachings. It serves as a poignant reminder of the ongoing battle to preserve moral purity in a culture that celebrates moral relativism and indulgence. In this narrative, the transformation of Lot's wife into a pillar of salt is not merely a cautionary tale, but a compelling allegory for the enduring conflict between fidelity to divine principles and the seductive allure of worldly pleasures. The Proof of Faith and Desperation After fleeing the doomed city of Sodom, Lot and his daughters embark on a harrowing journey fraught with fear and uncertainty. As they traversed rugged terrain, their hearts gripped by trepidation, they stumbled upon a modest refuge nestled within a small city. However, their sense of security remained elusive, prompting them to seek solace in the desolate embrace of a cave perched high amidst the craggy peaks of a mountainous expanse. In this cavernous sanctuary, the stark contrast between Lot's wavering faith and Abraham's unwavering trust in divine providence became palpable. While Abraham had steadfastly followed God's guidance through trials and tribulations, Lot's hesitation manifested in his choice to seek refuge in the isolated depths of the cave. Here, amid the rugged confines of stone and shadow, the human inclination towards solitude in the face of adversity found poignant expression. The cave, shrouded in darkness yet offering a semblance of protection, became a metaphor for the complex interplay of physical, emotional, and spiritual seclusion. It served as a sanctuary not only from the external perils that besieged them, but also from the tumultuous currents of doubt and fear that assailed their minds. Within the confines of this subterranean refuge, a palpable tension hung in the air, mingling with the faint echoes of whispered prayers and desperate pleas for deliverance. It was here, amidst the silent solitude of the cave, that the bonds of familial unity were tested to their limits. As the days stretched into weeks, Lot's daughters grappled with the weight of uncertainty, their hearts heavy with the burden of preserving their family's lineage. The cave, once a sanctuary, now became a crucible of fear and desperation, where the flickering flames of hope threatened to be extinguished by the encroaching shadows of despair. In the hushed confines of their rocky abode, Lot's daughters wrestled with their fears and anxieties, haunted by the specter of a future devoid of security and companionship. Theirs was a plight marked by isolation and uncertainty, a poignant reminder of the profound impact that traumatic experiences can have on one's ability to engage fully in life and relationships. At a certain point in time, Lot's daughters, grappling with their understanding of moral and social norms, crafted a daring plan. Faced with the desolation of their homeland, Sodom, and the loss of their mother, they sought to secure their lineage through unconventional means. With steely resolve, they each took turns to lie with their father, Lot, on successive nights, driven by the primal instinct to propagate their family line. From these secret unions, two sons were born, Moab and Ben-Ami, who would become the progenitors of mighty nations, the Moabites and Ammonites. These nations, though born of familial desperation, would later emerge as formidable forces intertwined with the tumultuous history of the Israelites. The saga of Lot in the Bible paints a portrait of complexity and controversy. After the fierce events in Sodom, the narrative delves into Lot's tumultuous relationship with his daughters. Yet, what befell Lot in the aftermath remains shrouded in mystery. Did he find relief and redemption, or did he worsen in the shadows of his past, separated in the caves of the mountains? Remarkably, the Apostle Peter, in his second epistle, offers a glimpse into Lot's enduring legacy. 
In verses 7 and 8 of chapter 2, Peter alludes to the harrowing destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, underscoring the significance of Lot's tale within the broader narrative of biblical lore. In the New Testament, Jesus discusses Lot within the Gospel of Luke, weaving his narrative into a broader apocalyptic context, reminiscent of the catastrophic destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot's salvation from this cataclysmic event serves as a vivid reminder of the impending end times, underscoring the critical importance of remaining vigilant and obedient to God's teachings. Lot's tale is a compelling one, intertwined with the legendary figure of Abraham, renowned as the patriarch of faith. While Abraham exemplified unwavering trust in divine providence, Lot's journey took a divergent path. Despite being privy to Abraham's deep faith, Lot opted to chart his course, guided by personal perceptions and desires. This decision led Lot into the heart of a city rife with moral corruption, ultimately resulting in dire consequences for him and his family. The striking imagery of fire and brimstone raining down upon Sodom and Gomorrah serves as a cautionary tale, illustrating the perilous outcomes of straying from the path of righteousness. Lot's story resonates with contemporary Christians as a poignant reminder of the enduring struggle between faith and worldly temptations. In the Epistle to the Romans, the Apostle Paul urges believers to resist conformity to societal norms, emphasizing the transformative power of faith over the dictates of the world. The narrative of Sodom and Gomorrah thus becomes more than a historical account. It becomes a vivid tableau, replete with lessons on the importance of ethical decision-making amidst cultural decadence. It urges us, like a beacon in the darkness, to cling steadfastly to our faith and moral compass, regardless of the external pressures we may face. The Controversial Genesis Tale In ancient Jewish beliefs, Lot's daughters faced a harrowing situation where they thought the world had ended and they were the sole survivors. Fearing the extinction of humanity, they resorted to a controversial act, incest, to ensure the continuation of the human race. This perspective was not unique to Jewish tradition. It was also shared by prominent figures of the early church like Augustine, Chrysostom, and Irenaeus. The daughter's decision stemmed from a belief that there were no other men left on earth to help them conceive offspring. This idea is highlighted in the elder daughter's statement expressing there being not a man in the earth to carry on their lineage. However, scholars like John Calvin offer a different interpretation. They argue that since Lot's family had recently resided in Zoar, they must have been aware of other survivors nearby. Calvin suggests that the daughter's remark may have referred to the immediate region they inhabited rather than the entire world. This insight adds depth to the understanding of the daughter's actions suggesting a nuanced perspective on their circumstances and decision-making process. Many experts have connected the two stories about Lot's daughters. Robert Alter believes that the last story shows how Lot gets punished for making a reckless offer. Some commentators say what Lot's daughters did was like forcing someone into sex. Esther Fuchs thinks the text shows Lot's daughters as the ones who started and did the rape. Alter agrees, saying that when the older daughter suggests, let us lie with him, it's almost like she's suggesting to force him into it. This story is also one of three in the Bible about a woman tricking a male relative into having a baby with her. It's like a deceitful way to become pregnant. According to a note in the New English Bible, this story tells the not-so-nice beginning of the Ammonites and Moabites, who were enemies of Israel. The Sacrifice and Redemption in Ancient Tales Lot's daughters, on the other hand, receive a compassionate portrayal. According to a traditional interpretation known as the Midrash, the daughters could have faced a severe punishment, like being burned alive, for their actions of sleeping with their father. However, the Midrash suggests that instead of solely judging their actions, the divine, who understands human intentions, considers their motives. The daughter's true intention wasn't to engage in inseparable relations with their father. Rather, they acted out of a desire to prevent the world from destruction. They believed that the entire world had suffered a fate similar to the awful flood as they encountered no other living beings wherever they traveled. Unaware that only Sodom had been decimated, they concluded that they were among the last survivors. In their minds, they saw themselves as the potential saviors of humanity, carrying the responsibility of ensuring its continuation. They thought, God has spared us so that we may be the vessels through which humanity perseveres. The divine, 
overflowing with blessings, looked deep into the souls of Lot's descendants and found their intentions pure and their actions commendable. As a result, when the decree was issued barring any Ammonite or Moabite from entering the congregation of the Lord, it was specifically aimed at males and not females, as elucidated in Pesikta Rabati 42. This interesting protection for females is rooted in the remarkable story of Ruth the Moabite, whose lineage intertwined with the fate of Israel. Ruth's extraordinary journey from the land of Moab to Bethlehem is a tale of resilience and devotion. As a widow, she chose to follow her mother-in-law, Naomi, back to Israel, pledging her allegiance not just to Naomi, but also to the God of Israel. Through her unwavering loyalty and hard work, Ruth caught the attention of Boaz, a respected figure in Bethlehem. Their union wasn't just a union of two individuals. It symbolized the intersection of two worlds, bridging Moabite ancestry with Israelite destiny. The Midrashic tradition adds layers of passion to this narrative. It suggests that when Lot was instructed to rescue his daughters from the impending destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, celestial beings already foresaw the lineage that would spring forth from them. Ruth's lineage, tracing back to Lot's daughter, became intertwined with Israel's story profoundly and unexpectedly. Moreover, Ruth's eventual marriage to Boaz bore fruit not only in the form of their son Obed, but also in the grand scheme of history. Obed became the father of Jesse, who in turn fathered David, Israel's iconic king. This lineage didn't end with David, holds within it a rich tapestry of history, faith, and destiny. It's a reminder that behind every decree lies a story waiting to be unveiled, revealing the intricate workings of the divine plan. Furthermore, in the story recounting the inseparable act committed by Lot's daughters, they express a desire to preserve seed from our father, using the term seed to refer to offspring rather than specifically mentioning sons. This choice of language is interpreted in Jewish tradition as indicating a deeper purpose related to the future arrival of the Messiah. This historical event, therefore, holds significance in the context of the messianic prophecy. Additionally, there is an interesting understanding found in Midrash that sheds light on the careful circumstances surrounding this act. It is said that Lot's daughters lacked wine, but through divine intervention, their cave home was transformed, symbolizing a glimpse of the future paradise with wine flowing abundantly. This imagery echoes the prophetic vision of a world where even mountains drip with wine. Moreover, the Midrash highlights another miraculous aspect. The belief that a virgin does not conceive from her first sexual encounter is challenged by the fact that Lot's daughters, who were virgins, did become pregnant from their initial union with their father. This anomaly emphasizes the exceptional circumstances and purity of their intentions. They engaged in this act only once, driven by a noble goal of ensuring the continuation of humanity. This narrative draws parallels with other instances in Jewish tradition where individuals act selflessly for a greater cause. For example, Ruth's actions on the threshing floor of Boaz are seen as representative of her commitment to a higher ideal. Similarly, Lot's daughters are portrayed as acting out of generosity and a sense of duty to future generations. What are your thoughts about why Lot's daughters lie down with their father? Share your opinions with us by leaving a comment below. Like and subscribe to explore more controversies and unlock more videos.